Hey everybody, welcome to Average Guy Opinions. I'm your average guy, John Corelli. Um, this is episode 166, I believe, or one no, 165. Anyway, it's Flag Day, it's Donald Trump's birthday. Happy birthday, Donald Trump! <laughs> he turned 75 today. Uh, happy birthday, America. It's not America's birthday. It's just, I don't know why we have a Flag Day. We got all other kinds of uh, holidays to celebrate this country, but apparently we need a Flag Day as well. So, anyway... There you go. Happy Flag Day. Uh, I kind of, Today's going to be kind of a mixed bag. Uh, a few things to talk about, but not anything that I feel like I can really spend 10, 10 minutes babbling about, because that's often what I do is just babble about stuff. I try to bring some intelligence to uh, these videos. Some people like what I have to say, some don't, but that's life, so here we go. Uh, first thing, uh, I'm inside because it's fucking hot outside. It's going to come close to hitting 100 today here in Denver, which it shouldn't. Um, and I, I'm not going to start clamoring about global warming and the things we need to do to combat it and that it's maybe too late, but it does depress me sometimes because here we are in mid-June and uh, it should never hit 100 in Denver. It just shouldn't. And it's going to be like this temperature, 98, 99 all week or at least for the next three days. And that sucks. And uh, we're not taking care of it as, as the human human species. We're just not doing anything about it. So, okay, I'll leave that. Okay. I will but go on to the next thing. Uh, but that is why I'm inside. It's really hot outside. Uh, I already mowed a lawn. That's why my hair is a mess. I was sweaty as hell. I did some weeding and here I am. So, uh, first thing I, I want to also want to talk about, uh, this is stupid because I just talked about it yesterday because I was the nut job of the day, uh, guessing or predicting that the, my New York Islanders would win in six games. Well, they won game one yesterday. It was a hell of a hockey game. And, uh, it, it's weird because, Two of the venues uh, that are hosting, uh, you know, two of the four teams that are remaining, it never snows there. One is Tampa Bay <laughs> and the other is Vegas. And I just can't cheer for teams if they have hockey and it doesn't ever snow there. And so that's, a, that's my bias going into these Stanley Cup playoffs. I'm hoping that the Islanders play the Montreal Canadiens and then beat the Canadiens. And by the way, it's really hard for me to cheer for the Canadiens because they are like the New York Yankees of hockey. But a Canadian team hasn't won it since 1993. So if uh, the Islanders are going to lose to anybody uh, I, or anyone else is going to lose, I, I, want, I would like a Canadian team, if it's not going to be the, Island, the New York Islanders, to hoist the Stanley Cup. So like I said, I'm just going to touch upon a few things today. Uh, bummer of a thing that happened yesterday. Uh, um, Award-winning actor Ned Beatty died. Uh, and Ned Beatty was really an iconic actor. Um, my favorite role of his was when he was uh, he played uh, um, or Detective Bolander in uh, Homicide, Life on the Street, one of my favorite shows ever. It was a very Law & Order type of show. In fact, uh, those of you who know Law & Order uh, Special Victims Unit know that uh, Detective John Munch, played by former stand-up comedian, by the way, uh, Richard Belzer, his character actually started on Homicide Life in the Street. Um, and uh, so it was just one of my favorite shows ever, maybe my favorite. I actually dedicated uh, um, one of these videos to Yafit Kato, who was also on that show and also died a couple months ago. And so it, um, it's unfortunate. We're losing people from that great show. We're just losing really good actors. And I mean, Ned Beatty was 83. He lived a long, really great life. He was he was he made his living as an actor for a very long time. Uh, one of the mo most iconic roles was... Uh, in Deliverance, where unfortunately he is the guy that gets raped. Uh, it's a, it's an amazing movie. It's a horrific scene, and it didn't have to be, like, graphically horrific. You just see what's happening, and uh, you know what's happening, and it's terrible. And it's just a, a horribly drawn-out scene. The guys, that's where the squeal like a pig for me line came from, is the guy that's raping Ned Beatty in, in the Appalachian woods, and it's terrible. But uh, Ned Beatty was an amazing actor, and I, I suggest if you get get to go back and check out little uh, glimpses of his career, maybe roles he played, you'd, you'd find an appreciation for him, um, despite that he, you know, was a, you know, he's actually, I think, older than a baby boomer. Uh, I think he's technically lost generation. I think he was born in 1938, if I'm doing the math right, maybe 39, but that's before the boomers. So, uh, like I said, amazing actor. Uh, also, what uh, I always like to call what, uh, or say that he had a, what I call the Wil Wilford Brimley quality. Uh, meaning he looked 80 when he was 50, but he also looked 80 when he was 80. So it was just, that was just the way he looked. I mean, he just 
he was already balding and gray and heavy when he was 50. Uh, but in the, 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 he didn't age at all the next 30 years. So good for him and good, what a great career and what a great life. And so rest in peace, Ned Beatty, and thank you for uh, all the entertainment you've provided. Uh, also want to talk about something uh, that I'll cover a few minutes as well. Um, gaming. Uh, I, my, my son is really into it, Logan, my younger son. Uh, he's 16, really into it. Uh, he, his dream is to become either a graphic designer or a game designer. He's actually, I give him a lot of credit. He's trying to create his own game. He is writing it out and he's, he cares about it. It's not just going to be some, you know, something like Pac-Man, you know, just, you know, it, he's got characters. He's writing out a storyline. He's developing the characters artistically because he's really good at art. And it's really cool to watch it come along. Now, having said that, uh, a company called E3, uh, put out a live stream uh, yesterday and today and a, a whole bunch of games are coming out. And some of the some of the companies, uh, like the smaller companies that are behind E three or the developers that created these games, get to say their piece or, or advertise their games, basically. Um, and some of these uh, some of these guys took an opportunity to I'm going to call it politicizing. I don't think it really is. I think it's just, but that's the way a lot of people took it. It's just you know, let's be honest. White males dominate gaming. They dominate, they are the basically the customer base for gaming. And uh, it was a live stream, and so you could chat on it and make comments. And so a lot of the, the new gaming companies are very diverse. There are a lot of women in gaming now. There are a lot of people of color in gaming now. And they took some opportunities to say, hey, this is where we're going, and this is where our company is taking things, and we're going to make this a more inclusive type of uh, entertainment, you know, form of entertainment. And you should have seen these little fuckers, these... Early Gen Z, late millennials just bitching up a storm on the chat. I came here for games, not to hear about politics. I mean, it was just, and a lot of it was even insulting, toward, especially towards women. But it was just like, you know what, just shut up and let them have their little spiel. Because it really is a white male dominated entertainment form. Just sit back, wait for your game to come up, whichever game you want them to talk about, and chill the fuck out. It was just really sad seeing that, that chat just light up. And my, even my son's like, this is embarrassing because he calls himself a gamer and he's like, I don't want to associate with these assholes. <laughs> like, I don't blame you. These guys are acting like fucking babies. So that was uh, another thing I just wanted to talk about. Uh, I guess uh, there's not too much uh, else I want to talk about. I do have comedy coming up uh, this weekend. I'm really psyched about it. Uh, I host two shows, one on Saturday, or excuse me, one on Friday and on Saturday. But first one's on Friday, naturally, because Friday comes before Saturday. My brain's not working well, but it often isn't, as my detractors will be sure to note. Uh, but on Friday, I uh, host my usual show at the Mercury Cafe. If anyone, uh, and if anyone here is in Denver or near Denver and would like to come down and check it out, it's $10 a ticket. Uh, the it supports Earth Justice, which is like the law branch of the Sierra Club. So they actually get laws made and uh, influence uh, legislators to get laws made to protect the planet, which I think is great. We've been uh, supporting Earth Justice through these shows for about the last two months. So we'll keep it going through the summer until, excuse me, until we decide on another uh, <clears throat> another charity to give to. I wouldn't even call it a charity, just a organization, I guess. And then on Saturday, I just got hit up to host a show. Uh, it's formerly the Voodoo Comedy Playhouse, which they did uh, comedy shows. They also did improv. It's, it's a, it was a great little venue. Uh, it's downtown. It's about a block away from the Mercury. I almost wish I could just stay the night, hang out down in downtown, and then just walk over. But uh, no, I'll be coming back to Wheat Ridge, and then uh, back on Saturday night I will host that show. Got great people on that show too, um, and I, I get to get paid to do comedy, so it's a lot of fun. I just do my eight to ten minutes at the top, and then I just introduce people after that. I love hosting. Excuse me, I'm itchy. I'm not doing any coke, I promise. I would be talking a lot faster, I, I imagine, if I did. Uh, let's end on that. Let's end on why I've never done coke. A, I don't like sticking things in my nose. B, people get weird around coke. <laughs> and C, uh, it drains your penis and your wallet. So, I'd like I said, this, <laughs> this episode is everywhere. Um, like I said, if you're in Denver, hey, come check out these uh, two shows. Hit me up here on... Uh, on uh, you know the common commentary of this video, and uh, I can let you know when they are. I think they're both at 8 p.m. if I remember right. They're both downtown, like I said, Mercury Cafe and uh, and uh, uh, 
what is now, oh, it's called Rise Comedy, by the way. I called it former Voodoo Comedy Playhouse. It's actually called Rise Comedy now, so that's good to know. Uh, good places downtown. If you can wade your way through the tent city, if you're not too afraid of homeless people, they're harmless. Uh, you know, you might run into one or two weird people, but none of them are threatening. Uh, come on down, down and watch some comedy. All right. Hope y'all are having a good summer. Stay cool. That's what I'm trying to do here and uh, talk to you soon. Bye.